I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have John Patrick Mullen, the co-founder of Soma Finance and Montreal. John, welcome to the show and thank you so much for taking the time to come on. Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Looking, looking forward to the discussion. Definitely. I've been following Mantra for quite a while. It's a beautiful ecosystem and I know that you're continuing to expand uh, so with Soma Finance, which is also incredible, but I don't know enough about it yet. Um, so I would love to kick off the discussion, just a high level overview for, for myself and for the viewers uh, on what is Soma Finance and, and Mantra DAO as well in the ecosystem. And then we can sort of break down and dive into the details after that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, thanks for thanks for having me on. Really, uh, really looking forward to the uh, chat today. Um, so it's probably important to start with MantraDAO and then kind of how that uh, flows into Soma. So MantraDAO is a project that I started with a, a couple of partners about a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago, um, which is essentially a DeFi focused DAO. Um, we've created a bunch of different DeFi products, including a, um, a staking platform, a yield farming platform, money market, lending, Launchpad. Uh, we have like this little lottery pool called the Mantra Pool. Um, we are active on a bunch of different chains. So we're live on uh, ETH, BSC, Polygon, um, soon to launch on Solana, Terra, um, another layer one that's TBD, I can't say yet, uh, Polkadot Parachain. Um, and we're actually building our own chain, um, which is going to be a Cosmos Tendermint uh, based uh, uh, layer one. Um, we run validator nodes for a bunch of different proof of stake chains, we probably support, I think, 25 to 30 different networks. Um, so we're really kind of plugged into the DeFi, Web3, and kind of DAO space, I guess. Um, so that's Mantra DAO. Um, but basically, kind of the story of how Soma uh, came to be, um, around the time that we created our launch pad, which is called Zenit, we were talking about that a little bit earlier, you participated in some of the launches. Um, when we launched this product back in early uh, 2021, uh, we very, like, even before we launched it, we're like, this is going to be a highly commoditized product within the space. Everyone's going to have one. It's not a very complex product to build. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's going to, you know, try to have it. And the only kind of unique selling point for most of these things is maybe a unique model that's going to get replicated <laughs> pretty quickly because you can just fork <laughs> or change the, change the onboarding structure. Um, or in our case, we're like, okay, well, we have this partner. The, our joint venture partner in Soma, Tritorian Capital, um, which is a U.S. broker dealer, and they have a very special license that allows us to do compliant issuances of tokens. So we're like, okay, instead of trying to go this way of like attracting all these amazing projects and you know, kind of di differentiating ourselves that way, um, let's differentiate ourselves with the fact that we have a completely defensible moat around this license. Um, mm -hmm. So that was pretty much where we where we came to initially start talking about the idea of Soma. And originally the idea was to actually just have it as an extension, pure direct extension of Montreal. Mm -hmm. um, but then but then we decided it actually was better to be under its own brand, its own its own kind of uh, moniker, its own, you know, everything. And we kept spitballing a little bit in um, in thinking of new ideas. And we're like, okay, well, not only can we do a compliant and regulated launch pad, but really we can create all these DeFi primitives that, you know, everyone's used to, but in a, you know, again, a KYC and AML compliant um uh, structure as well as utilizing this brokerage license to uh, add other different asset classes, you know, to these types of products. Um, obviously, securities, commodities, ETFs, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so, in a nutshell, um, Soma is really just a particularly US but globally compliant uh, DeFi platform that um, has a DeFi native user experience. Um, but we do require KYC and AML on the way in because basically it creates this kind of walled garden around the platform that you can, you know, trade on an AMM or participate in a launch pad or, you know, lend and borrow your, your, your assets all in a permissionless fashion. But we know who you are because we know based on your white, on your wallet and your KYC information, who you are and what, you know, kind of what you're doing. Um, this allows us to ma maintain compliance and also keep out the bad actors. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And um, thank you for all that explanation. And that does shed some light on the differences there. And yeah, with, with Soma and with regulation, uh, just continuing to grow as, as more institutions and regulators get involved, um, there's definitely a need for that. And, th and that makes sense why, why Soma has been created. Uh, and when I first think of, you know, a launch pad and then like regulated, I think security token offerings, but I feel like it also is just like any uh, regular token that wants to go through the proper compliance to be available to the U.S. Uh, but I also... Yep consider like NFTs potentially or other, other DeFi yep. solutions. Um, so is it going to be sort of a, and you mentioned there are ETFs and, and commodities and things that I, I don't really associate normally with crypto, but, but can be crypto based as well. Are you focused on 
all of these different types of assets for Soma? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, we're not going to launch everything on day one. Um, you know, we'll roll it out in time and, and focus on you know certain things um, you know in due course. Um, but really, the the idea is to be able to support a multi asset platform, um, both on the issuance side as well as the uh, kind of the trading in the Dex uh, product. Um, we think they go hand in hand. Um, you know, we're, we're, one thing that I continuously say is I hate the term STO, and I'm really trying to move yeah. some away from it, um, just because it has a little bit of a bad connotation from, you know, the 2018, 2019 days where it was like the next big thing and it never really came to be. Yeah. Um, really what I'm trying to push forward with Soma is we're not just doing security tokens. We're just literally doing compliant tokens, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the difference between the tokens that we're creating now and kind of back then was twofold in my opinion. One, um, when people were doing STOs back in the day, they're really focused on like tokenizing real estate or you know some big financial product or you know some equity in a company, right? Um, the value add wasn't really that clear or significant, and realistically, a lot of the um, participants were only institutional investors. There was no ability to access retail. And to be completely honest, does you know Joe Schmo off the street really care about? you know, owning a piece of a building, it's not as like sentimental to them. Yes, it might be interesting, right? But is it like, the, is it like, you know, supporting uh, your favorite crypto coin? Probably yeah. not, right? Um, so what we're trying to do is actually build a retail friendly asset class that can support, you know, anything from games, NFTs, metaverse, um, sports. So we're talking to a lot of athletes, sports leagues, etc. that mm -hmm. again, retail can get behind. Um, we'll be issuing them as securities in the United States. But effectively, they're just tokens, right? Mm -hmm. So we're just doing the security is just on the back end, it's just compliance work. It doesn't actually change much in terms of the smart contract. You actually will be issuing tokens in two tranches, so like an onshore US tranche and, a, and, an, and an offshore tranche. But the token smart contract is the same, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really the key. Um, so you know, we're, we're we think this is a, a kind of a game changer because you know US retail particularly has really been shut out from any type of you know primary issuance or primary launch. And then they can't get into ICOs, right? And everyone tries to stay away from Americans. I'm American. I believe you're American, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we can't even participate in these types of things most of the time. Um, so we think that this, this will be a, a bit of a game changer because we'll be able to directly sell to, to U.S. retail uh, investors in token form. Mm -hmm, definitely. Great points, John. And yeah, you're right about 2018. I was going to security token conferences back then, and it was supposed to be the next trend. And look at us now, years and years later, uh, you know, you're right, like the main cryptocurrencies that could be classified as securities, if they go through the proper compliance that checks a lot of green boxes, doesn't necessarily have to be equity in the company. It can just be a token. Yes. Um, so I really do like the path that you're taking with Soma Finance in, in that regard. Um, and to talk a little bit more about the regulation and not so much on the security tokens, but more on DeFi, which has been the trend over the last few years, is continues to explode with the value locked uh, as more institutions come in and regulators, uh, especially with this battle between you know centralized exchanges, um, having that regulation in the KYC and then DeFi being the wild west, they're trying to like regulate DeFi and create regulated DeFi. And I'm, I'm curious mm. on your insights uh, into like regulated DeFi or just having DeFi that, you know, where SOMA is attached to it and there's the proper compliance. Sure. I mean, I know a lot of people think that they're completely kind of, uh, a polar opposites <laughs> where, you know, DeFi should not be regulated or, or they just don't go hand in hand. And I completely understand that there needs to be, you know, that wild, wild west element to a degree to push innovation and things. Obviously, you don't want to see the rug pulls and the scams and, and these type of things. And it is an unfortunate reality of the industry that we work in and, and many industries, to be honest. It's not just, it's not just only crypto. Um, but kind of the way that we're trying to go about SOMA is, again, creating a experience that is similar to F as if you're participating just on Uniswap or Compound or Aave or even Montreal, right? right? Um, but um, there is a lay of level of, you know, uh, kind of backing that, you know, is supported by licensing and AML and KYC processes and compliance and things of this nature that actually will help reduce, um, you know, those rug pulls and those scams and those, and th and those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a bit more of a centralized nature to some of that uh, business, but realistically, if you want to get in the, you know, the listed companies, the big institutions, the regulated fund managers, the asset managers, et cetera, you know, they are just not, they're literally not able to go and, you know, purchase tokens on Uniswap because, you know, there's significant, I mean, forget the securities 
problems, which is a significant one, but they're more worried about the AML and KYC concerns because they don't know who the counterparty is mm -hmm. on that trade, sure. right? Like they don't know if it's myself or you, who's going to be part of that liquidity pool, or if it's a guy in North Korea or, you know, some separatists in Russia, which is obviously the hot topic of the, of the day, yeah. or, you know, some terrorist organization or narco trafficker. They don't know, right? Mm -hmm. um, in our situation, they do because, you know, again, we have that walled garden I mentioned. Um, but the user experience is the same. And you can have the kind of enhanced functionalities that inherently blockchain and DeFi can bring you in terms of enhanced yield and you know, a bunch of different kind of permissionless opportunities, which are you know, very, very, very cool. Um, but you're you know, doing it in a way that is actually accessible by you know, a listed company or, or, or the like. Um, so we, we've actually seen a really like a significant in, uh, interest in a lot of these kind of you know, big traditional kind of trading firms or, 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 or um, investors. Um, because again, they've just been kind of shut out of that on-chain DeFi experience, um, and and you know, Soma Finance is aiming to you know bring bring them that. Definitely amazing, great points, and you know, you talked a lot a lot there about funding and and all of these big companies and and how they have to follow those procedures. And I was looking at you know, these large companies, and one of the largest companies that I'm seeing in in the NFT space and DeFi is, is Animoca Brands, and I saw that they recently led part of the funding round for Soma Finance, um, which is great to, to capitalize the company. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit and, and you know what that capital is going to be for uh, as you continue to grow in the near future here. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're, we're really excited to be working very closely with Animoca. Um, obviously, I'm normally based in Hong Kong. I'm currently in New York. Mm -hmm. um, but Soma is, is basically a uh, Hong Kong and New York team. Um, and uh, Animoca is from Hong Kong, so we're really happy to kind of have a, our, our neighbor um, you know, he heavily supporting us. Um, and when we, when we started getting in touch with, with him, uh, about the Soma finance fundraise, you know, initially you're kind of like, you know, traditional DeFi regulation, the, you know, does that really kind of play with NFTs, metaverse gaming, which is obviously the wheelhouse of Animoca. Mm -hmm. And realistically, when we went out initially, that wasn't like our aim, right? It wasn't necessarily our, our sector of focus. Um, but we realized very quickly through the pain points that Animoca was facing, mm -hmm. that many of their portfolio companies, particularly which are gaming companies, metaverse, NFTs, et cetera, were having significant issues, again, accessing the US market. Mm -hmm. You know, play to earn games, in-game assets mm -hmm. are highly, highly likely to be deemed as securities in the United States. Mm -hmm. So effectively what they were doing is they're just like, meh, if you're from America, cannot participate. <laughs> yeah. That's a big problem with there's, you know, there's 300 plus million people in the United States just alone, right? That's it. Yeah. one of the biggest crypto markets out there. Um, and one of the gaming, biggest gaming markets out there. So they were very, very, very keen to participate and, and, and work with us because, you know, they have tons and tons of portfolio companies that need the support to be able to access, access this market. Um, another one that was participating in, in, the, in the seed round is Griffin Gaming Partners, which is the largest gaming uh, VC in the United States. Um, you know, they're the backers of Forte and some of these other, uh, you know, massive, you know, uh, massive uh, gaming companies. Um, they are also active participants. So we're really lucky that we got you know, two gaming and NFT giants um, participating and supporting us from day one. Um, and we have a big, big, big pipeline of, of companies that are going to come through the issuance uh, uh, platform, just like I mentioned. So, you know, we have some really, really exciting stuff coming on, on just the launch pad alone. Um, in terms of kind of like where the fundraising is going towards, obviously it's, you know, it's, it's, it's building out the team. Um, the, the, mm -hmm. the platform is as, as, Fortunately, been able to reutilize a lot of the existing technology and, and tech stack that Mantra's already built. Obviously, we had to make some adjustments um, in terms of you know just adding additional compliance layers and you know some small tweaks here and there to make sure it's you know FINRA and SEC compliant. Mm -hmm. um, but really, a lot of it's going to build out the team, and then uh, you know it's a retail focused platform to begin with. Uh, so we're going to heavily, heavily market it. Um, so we have a couple of cool initiatives that we're going to be launching. Um, the first one we launched the Dex is a lock drop. Um, so we're going to be you know. Uh, basically a pre-launch liquidity incentivization program where people can earn SOMA by, by locking liquidity. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one, 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 one cool thing on the way. Awesome. Looking forward to that. And yeah, uh, I feel like there's a lot that still needs to be worked on. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the near future in terms of the platform? And you know, is there any tentative schedule uh, on releasing and getting these people uh, involved in, in this pre-launch, uh, as you mentioned? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've already begun a whitelisting procedure just for the Soma token public sale. Um, that I think has already reached, I think we already have over 250,000 signups, which has been pretty wow. crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot. 
Um, I mean, we'll see how many of those can pass KYC, but you know, still a lot of people to, to, to begin with. Um, and um, I, I think we were mentioning a little bit beforehand, like right now, the, the actual tech for the launch pad, the, the, uh, the licensing is already ready to go. Um, so it's really just like actually getting some of the deals to come through the pipeline. Um, so I would expect that, I mean, we're sitting here at the end of February right now. I would expect that as soon as, uh, you know, mid to late March, as we're going to have a couple of deals that are going to come through that you'll see a couple of games and maybe some, you know, some, some sports related activities or tokens come through the platform. So that's on the way. We'll start doing light whitelisting procedures for those as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so be on the lookout. Um, after that, we're going to be doing a full kind of launch of the AMM uh, DEX uh, trading platform, um, which will comprise of both cryptos as well as uh, public equities. Mm -hmm. um, so basically how it works is that um, there's going to be two ways that people can mint uh, kind of equity tokens. Um, one is just, you know, purely from the platform itself. So you can, mm -hmm. you know, send in ETH or Bitcoin or cash even, um, or a number of different assets, and then you just mint the tokens. And as part of the lock drop, you'll actually be getting discounted equities because we're going to be subsidizing essentially your purchase. Um, and then the other way is actually, and th this might not be from day one, but eventually you'll be able yeah. to move your existing equity portfolio from, you know, Robinhood or Interactive Brokers or Charles yeah. Schwab or E-Trade or whatever. And we can do another cool campaign where we'll cover, you know, your, your transfer costs, right? Wow. Um, the, 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 the cool thing with that product um, that is different from other si synthetic equity products out there is like you actually retain ownership of the asset. Mm -hmm. um, so we hold one-to-one -one custody for each you know, Tesla token. So if we have a Soma Tesla token, we hold one share of Tesla in custody on the traditional, uh, you know, custodial broker dealer um, on, on your behalf. Wow. And that means you can maintain the dividends, you get the voting rights, you get all that good stuff, but then you can have the 24 seven trading, you can yield farm with it, you can lend, lend and borrow against it, you can do all these cool DeFi things. Wow. And that's that coming incredible. in the next two, three months, two, three months. Wow. Amazing, John. I'm looking forward to seeing that. That really does sound incredible. And, uh, really easy way for people involved in traditional finance to just move over into DeFi and experience all those benefits that you just mentioned there about, you know, all the time like having the custody, uh, not being uh, able to do anything when the market closes on the regular market and, you know, crypto is 24-7 yep. and the world is 24-7 now. So that's the way that it should be. Yep. So I'm really excited for that. Thank you for sharing all those details. For the viewers that are looking to follow along uh, with these updates as they happen live, what is the best way for them to get involved in the communities and, and to follow the updates? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the two best ways are, you know, hop in our Telegram group um, and follow us on Twitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, th th those are definitely the easiest um, for the time being. You know, if anyone wants to reach out to me, I'm pretty active on Telegram as well. So, you know, or, or Twitter for that matter. So by all awesome. means, shoot me a message, drop in my DMs, do my best to answer. <laughs> Sounds great. I'll leave all those links in the description box below as well for the viewers. Thank you so much, John, for coming on to talk about Soma and, and MantraDAO to explain it all. I appreciate that. All the best on these updates that you mentioned. I will be following along and let's follow up in the near future. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on.